Hello there, it's Pastor Matthew of Rivers of Life Community Church and I look today to continue on our walk through the Gospel of Mark. On Sunday we were looking at uh, the initial few verses of the Gospel of Mark and we were looking at John the Baptist preparing the way. And now enters Jesus in the next section and we're going to read from 9 through to verse 13 of chapter 1 of the Gospel of Mark. In the, NIV, in the uh, version of the NIV I've got, it's entitled The Baptism and Temptation of Jesus. And it reads, At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and he was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven open, Coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and a spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once, the spirit sent him out into the desert. And he was in a desert for 40 days and being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. So the two pieces in that, one follows on from the bit about John after he'd said that there's going to be one who's going to come who will baptise you with fire. But here Jesus has entered and as he says there, Jesus came from Nazareth. That's the first Uh, detail we've got in Mark to show where Jesus had come from. Other Gospels have a bit more detail but yes the early years of Jesus' life was spent in the town of Nazareth. That's where he grew up and that's where he as far as we know stayed. Very likely following in uh, as we've got detail from other Gospels uh, he lived uh, growing up in his father's trade of being a carpenter. Uh, the detail says uh, Nazareth and Galilee. So Nazareth was in the region of, of Galilee, a bit like you have a county or state. Uh, Galilee was a bit like that. Uh, and it also gives you an indication that uh, Nazareth was not, uh, is only a few, probably about uh, 10 uh, kilometres or so, um, six or so miles away from Galilee. And so that gives you an idea of where Jesus was and the fact he travelled uh, a fair number of miles uh, to uh, um, a site traditionally known uh, to be the place where it's thought that Jesus was baptised or where John spent most of the time. We've got a bit of detail from the fact that uh, he said before that John was uh, in the wilderness uh, by the Jordan. So he's just, he was baptising the Jordan, but it says he was in the wilderness well, uh, and uh, that people came from the uh, Judean countryside. And it, so it would have been a fair journey for Jesus to um, uh, walk down, but that was what people did in those days. It was uh, not much then to do that kind of journey, as long as they travelled light. If they did travel uh, with more belongings, they would probably use some kind of animal to get there. But we've... Jesus, I suspect he would have just um, probably gone by himself. But as it says there, he went from Nazareth of, uh, Nazareth of, of uh, Galilee. And there he was with John, baptised in the Jordan. And it's a, a particularly spectacular sight, I think, to see anyone baptised. Um, because it's such a significant process of a believer coming to the point of saying I want to show the world that I am a believer that um, I have a new life the old is gone washed away in the water as it were uh, and and so there is actually the physical picture of being physically washed but actually more it's a case of being spiritually washed washed uh, washing away sins. It's a process of saying, I've, I've gone to repentance and I, I want for forgi- forgiveness as well. But there it says in verse 10, as Jesus was coming up out of water, because this is the thing, Jesus he didn't need to ask for forgiveness. 
He didn't need to, because this is the other thing about baptism. Once you have that cleansing, you have a, a, a better relationship, a new relationship with God himself. Whereas Jesus didn't need that, because he already, already had that good relationship with Father God. So in that instance, what happened there in verse 10, as Jesus coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open. Can you imagine that? What that, that must have been like to see that. He was coming up out of water. It's almost like you can imagine it like a slow motion picture of the waters just part coming back off Jesus' body. And at that time, the heavens open. As Jesus was coming up, the heavens open and the Spirit descending upon him. And it says there, Spirit descending upon him like a dove. That wasn't as a dove. Is obviously a picture painted for us to get an idea of what it must have been like. The picture that the people around would have got seeing this happen. But it looked like a dove coming down upon Jesus. But this is the Spirit coming into Jesus at the time. You imagine what a sight that must have been. Uh, the Spirit meeting the sun and in that moment in that moment another special piece coming up in here it says and verse 11 and a voice came from heaven so that's going to be father god himself saying you are my son whom i love with you i am well pleased now these are the words spoken directly to jesus himself I would imagine, can you imagine what that's like? Because it's the thing, as a believer in Jesus, you are entitled to hear those words as well, spoken to you. Because with Jesus, what he did on the cross, dying for our sins, for the forgiveness, we have therefore righteous, we are the righteousness of God because of what Jesus did on the cross, dying for our sins. So where these words are spoken from heaven to Jesus, hear them in the same way for yourself. You are my son. Or it could be, because that was Jesus, you are my daughter, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now sometimes this is what we need in our lives, is a recalibration in our hearts and soul and mind to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. As the scripture says, written by Paul, I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. It also says, but when I am in Christ, the old is gone, the new has come. So it presents you know, us with a situation a unique kind of relationship with father god through jesus our savior for us to hear the words i love you i am well pleased now you might have heard the term rose colored spectacles it's possibly a bit like that although these aren't rose colored so these are these are true lenses it's, there's nothing there's no no falsehood in father god no falsehood in the in the Trinity. It's pure and righteous. There's nothing wrong with it. And because of Jesus, Father looks at us and sees you as one whom he is well pleased. What he asks us to do in return is to be obedient to the call upon our lives. What he wants from us is to tune our ears to him. How do we do that? It's remembering, as we've seen before in the previous videos, Jeremiah 33, 3, to call out to him. And it may be a case, Lord, uh, tune my ears, tune my heart, my, my, my soul, my mind, to hear your voice in my life. So that I will do as you want me to do. Because here I am, just as you laid down your life as a servant, I lay my life down for you 
as a servant, as an offering to you for what you've done for me. The offering that you've given to me, I now offer my life up as a living sacrifice, a spiritual sacrifice, an offer to you because I love you that much. Because you lo- And this is the thing. This is an act of offering. It's an, an act of love that we should we, we can give because because he Christ first loved us. Awesome. Verse twelve reads, and at once the Spirit sent Jesus, sent him out into the desert. So it's probably not very far from the area that's described as being in the wilderness desert it's almost like where it said voice of one calling out in the desert as it says in verse 3 now Jesus is going to be called into the desert and that was the spirit so the spirit came upon him in power like a dove sending on him having the heavens torn open now the spirit is sending him out this very same spirit that is sending on him sent him out into the desert and he was there in the desert for 40 days being tempted by Satan so in all that time there's a a unique battle in unique circumstances where Jesus was in the desert so he was where with the spirit because the spirit put, put in there and that's who all he was with. Now, other Gospels give more details of some of the tests that Jesus went through. In Mark's Gospel, it just says he went out and he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. In other areas, it would say that he fasted. He, he's nothing, he had nothing. But he spent that time alone. And, and as we will see later that this happened prior to Jesus going into his ministry. So just as much as the Spirit had come upon him, you could argue, well, he could have gone straight into his ministry. No, he spent 40 days away on his own. The only thing that was with him, which is nearly everything that you're going to need, to, as, I say, as I've said before in other videos, is that the Spirit is, all you, is the main thing that you need in order to, to lead your life. And this is the thing, if Jesus is needing that, to walk, to, for us to walk as Christians, how much more do we need that as well? And he was there. What quite happened in those days? Yes, we got from other uh, scriptures um, that he was tempted by Satan. But it, there was probably all kinds of temptation. Because one of the things that Satan wanted him to do is, is to uh, say, what is the point of doing this? Why are you dying from these miserable beings that you've created? All they do is just give you grief. But no, this is the whole thing about Jesus. He stuck it out. He left his life as a servant, offering himself up, yes, to Father God, but he offered it to you and me. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for your blood brought sacrifice. I thank you that you won the battle from beginning to end. And Lord, I thank you that you did it for me and you did it for those who are listening to and seeing this video for the glory of your name i pray that your spirit would be upon us as we put our faith and trust in you amen well i hope you've received something from this video in these few verses uh if you've got any comments you can put it in the comments section uh, if you want to uh, listen to more of me you can either uh, to subscribe and look at the other videos um and I shall be looking to post more videos with, with more teaching from Mark. In the meantime, God bless you.